Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Lara. As Kasia said, um, I am the co-manager of the Young Europeans Network, which is the it's a youth wing of the Three Million. And the Three Million is an organization that was set up right after Brexit to campaign for the rights of EU citizens in the UK. Um, and since then, our main focus has been on the EU settlement scheme so that EU citizens in the UK could continue living and working and studying in the UK. But more and more, we have started to focus on democratic rights. One, because a lot of EU citizens felt cheated out of the, the Brexit referendum, that they didn't have a say on something that was so massively impacting their own lives. But also, um, we know that um, EU citizens can vote in the UK, just like they can vote in any EU country that they can live in. So we always make, we wanted to encourage EU citizens to make use of that right to vote. Um, and then with Brexit, uh, we were worried uh, about what was going to happen to the voting rights of EU citizens. We didn't know if EU citizens in the UK were going to continue being able to, to vote. So in 2020, we started talking about our home, our vote as a, as a precursor to the campaign to make sure that the rights of EU citizens to vote in the UK were going to be at, at least maintained and then campaigning to for the franchise to be extended. Um, and then we only got some clarification about what was gonna happen uh, around May last year with the elections bill. And the elections bill, as you can see here, uh, the main headlines in the UK at least are about how we're introducing mandatory photo ID. Um, the UK um, doesn't, people just show up to the polling station, they can just say their name and their, their address and they're able to to actually vote if they are registered. Now the government wants to wants people to take some form of photo ID, like a passport or a driver's license. And there's a lot of talk about how that will disenfranchise vulnerable minorities. Uh, a lot of people in the, uh, there's like some maths that are around 3 million people could be disenfranchised. But there was very little focus on how this would impact EU citizens. Um, so that it was kind of our job to look into it in detail, look at the legislation and understand how that was going to affect EU citizens. And what we know now is that EU citizens who arrived in the UK by the end of 2020, 2020 by December 2020, and have either settled or pre-settled status, will be able to continue mm. registering to vote. However, if an EU citizen is entering the UK today, they will not automatically have that right to vote in the local election. They will only be able to, reg to register and vote if their country of birth or of original citizenship has a bilateral voting rights agreement with the UK. At the moment, that has only been secured with Poland, Portugal, Spain, and Luxembourg. So for example, if a German citizen enters the UK today uh, to study, they will not be able to vote. But a German citizen that entered in 2019 will. So we will have this discrepancy, which will make really difficult to understand who has and doesn't have the right to vote. Um, so like this is just a, a small little graph to kind of illustrate the, the, the complexity of who can and can't vote in the UK. And not only do we have like a set of legislation for national elections, we have a set of legislation for local elections, and then there are different rules for Scotland and Wales as well. So Scotland and Wales, as you can see there, that are more green ticks, which is what our ambition is to do elections more like them, uh, where they do have some level of residence-based voting rights. Is it too loud for you guys with this, the storm? No? Okay, good. Um, so yeah, you can see it here. Um, and just like, uh, like Sanaz has mentioned, EU citizens can already vote in, in local elections in the UK, but then even in, in general elections for parliament, qualifying Commonwealth citizens because of the colonial history of the UK can vote in those elections and Irish citizens as well. So when voter rights campaigners are going out asking, encouraging people to register to vote, we always have to ask, um, where are you from? Um, can you vote? Can you not vote? And it adds complexity. And the elections bill, instead of making it easier for people to understand who can and can't vote, will make it harder because now we'll have to go and ask people, 
where if they are from an EU country, what state they arrived in the UK, and if the country that they are from has a bilateral agreement or not. So I'll just cover a little bit some of the voter registration drive campaign that we've, we've run in the past. So before we even knew whether uh, the legislation was going to change or not, we just wanted to make sure that EU citizens who were eligible were going to be registering to vote. So we did a lot of online content. We created a, a web page, ourhomeourvote.co.uk, which is still uh, operating to them today. Uh, we did a, we have a, a TikTok account. We, we talked about voter registration there to try to reach new audiences. We tried to join Facebook groups. So like, I'm sure that you guys know as well that there are like sometimes like those Germans in the UK Facebook groups or Brazilians in London. And a lot of people rely on those groups a lot for information. Uh, so we had volunteers from different nationalities joining them and, and posting targeted messages in the, the language to, to reach out to them. And that worked really well because it was seen as a more trusted information. Um, the, the social media assets like page content, it, that didn't work so well because for, for, for us to be able to target um, specific communities in specific languages at such a high scale, we just didn't have enough resources. Uh, so like those more direct reaching out to groups, as I say, like those Facebook groups worked a little bit better for us. And, and we also did face-to-face -face, uh, campaigning where we actually went to, uh, um, we went to some areas with, with leaflets and that worked really well as well because we went to specific nationality shops. So like a Romanian shop in a specific area of the UK that has a big Romanian population. So we were able to actually go with, with, with my colleague, Alexandra, who is Romanian, and we were able to like sp speak to them and explain their voting rights. Just out of interest, I also included here that we did a, a EU Citizens Festival on, on Zoom. We had like 15 events. We had like, like lots of keynote speakers, some of them like really influential and really popular. And I, I think it's just interesting that for us that didn't work so well. The, the on the ground, face to face, in person work a lot, lot better uh, than an online big speaker influencers uh, campaign. So if anyone is ever wondering how to run a voter registration drive campaign, uh, that's some of our learning. Um, and then just moving on from the knowing who can register to vote. And then, like, uh, as I said, like the legislation started to change in terms of saying who was going to be able to register to vote or not. So we repurposed our campaign and said there are a lot of migrants in the UK that don't have the right to vote. Your the government is changing legislation, so why not change it for the better? The elections bill is actually seeking to restrict voting rights. As I said, EU citizens who arrive today will not have the right to vote. And what our campaign has been saying is why not extend the franchise? We already have a system where some migrants have the right to vote in local elections as well as in general elections so why not extend that further so the way that we've been doing that is that we've been targeting local councils in the uk so um like elected local councillors we've been asking them to speak out on social media and write to government ministers as well because at the end of the day if even though they don't have the legal power, the legislative power to change that policy, they're the ones that would be affected on a day-to-day -day basis and would have to be introducing the, 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 the policies that the elections bill will seek to introduce. Uh, so it's, that, that has been working really well for us in targeting local politicians at, at, at a very local level because they're interested. And, and we also see that there's more cross-party support with that. Uh, like we tried to have conversations with the Conservative Party in government and just they don't want anything to do with us. But there are Conservative councillors across the UK that have shown support with our campaign because some of them are migrants themselves or they see that their community has a big migrant population and it doesn't quite make sense that some migrants as in EU citizens have the right to vote, but others don't like Brazilians. And what we found interesting as well is that due to Brexit, the, the Conservative campaign focused very much on, we've now left the EU, we're going to be global Britain. But there's a disparity there that even though 
they've left the EU, they haven't taken that step to make elections at least or other parts of society as global as they as it could be, as in to extend the franchise to, to voters. So we've been playing on that narrative as well, which has been at least working with local level conservative councillors. And we've also been demonstrating that this is not a system that doesn't exist. It, 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 it's a reality in other areas of the, of the world. New Zealand even has residence-based voting rights for, for general elections. Um, it, there's no there's no necessary consistency. It's, some countries have residence-based voting rights after someone can show that they've lived in the place after like three years or after five years. But one way or another, it's possible to, to see that this is a model that exists. Uh, we're not just making it up. And it exists within the UK, Scotland and Wales, as of 2021, have allowed all of their residents to vote in local elections, as in for the Scottish Parliament and for the Welsh Assembly. And also we've done some, uh, uh, some polling and we found that 63% of people that were polled uh, agreed that all residents should have the right to vote in local elections. And of course, we our ambition is to build on this and campaign for parliamentary elections. Uh, but we decided just to start with local elections as our campaign because of what the elections elections bill aims to do right now. But we were really impressed that 63% of people already agree with us. And we do think it's because of, of the complexity that I mentioned. It's already like there are already some migrants that can vote. So why not others? as like, all, all of us are contributing to society equally and paying local council tax equally. And this is just a quote that I like as well, that who should be able to vote are those that have a genuine connection to uh, the polity, as in like we're contributing, we're possibly, like lots of us are paying taxation, we make use of the public services, um, so why not be able to have a democratic say over it? Um, and in terms of, we, we have some numbers as well. In total, we know that at least a million residents would be able to uh, would be able to gain the right to vote in local elections if our proposal passed. And as, as I said, this is just for for local elections. So parliamentary elections, the number would be a lot higher. Uh, but still, is a significant number of people that are disenfranchised, but also not big enough that it it justifies the government not making that change. It's a number that um, it could be with, with, through legislation and through campaigning, it, it could be easily included into, into the policy. And something that we found really important as well is to platform the voices of migrants that don't have the, don't yet have the right to vote. So for example, we've got Fabiano in the, in the bottom corner here. He's someone that is from Brazil. He lived in the UK for over 14 years. He, he loves the UK, but he's never had a chance to, to have a vote. And these stories, uh, we actually find them very persuasive uh, with politicians. And parliamentary ad advocacy, as I said, like, the, like ideally we would have an amendment to the elections bill that would allow all qualifying foreign residents to have the right to vote. That's still our aim. And we have received endorsement from the Liberal Democrat Party and the Labour Party in the UK. Um, we the, the election bill is now in the Lord's stage um, and we at least hope that a Lord will be able to propose that amendment to at least be debated in Parliament. We don't have any, any hope that it will pass right now because of the Conservative majority that has already expressed um, that they don't support us, but we at least want to have this discussed. Uh, so that we can continue building on it in the future. Um, there will be more local elections in May this year, so we want to uh, still highlight the people that will be uh, shut out from the democratic process. And, and hopefully, um, when there's a different government in power, um, we can like, just say, you've already supported this in the past. We hope that you are able to implement this now and continue building on this. And both the Labour Party and the Scottish National Party submitted amendments to the elections bill saying that um, every resident with indefinite leave to remain, so like indefinite status in the UK, should have the right to vote in parliamentary elections. So like our campaign has started to create a different uh, debate, conversation about who has the right, to, who should be able to vote or not. Um, 
And as I said, like we've been working with councils, we've been encouraging people to uh, write to their MPs, write to their councillors, and just be part of the campaign, volunteer, share their stories with us about why they care about, about voting rights. And I think that is it. <laughs>